From far and near, pilgrims are streaming into Jerusalem to celebrate the great festival of Passover. There is joy and happiness as they ascend to the city. Isaiah 51.11 is on their lips as they sing, Therefore the redeemed of the Lord shall return and come forth singing unto Zion, and everlasting joy will be upon their heads. Listen to their joy.
Welcome to Passover week in Jerusalem. Passover reminds us that God has delivered us from bondage. As we were about to leave Egypt, God sent one final appeal of mercy. The blood of a sacrificial lamb was to be smeared over the front door of each home. The slain lamb pointed forward to Jesus, the Lamb of God. When the angel of God passed over the home with the blood over the door, those inside were saved. In Jesus' day, the Passover service was still kept. At the center is a meal with the eating of the slain Passover lamb, a lamb, a perfect lamb, without blemish or defect, a lamb, A perfect lamb symbolizing the coming Messiah who would die, bearing the weight and penalty of all sin. Jesus has asked Peter and John to prepare the upper room for the Passover meal. Let us join them as they finish up the final details of preparation. It just seems to me that having a mother at the right time is the right thing to do. I, I didn't resent that at all, but uh, somebody else does. I suppose they can do that. Yeah, that happens. There, you can light some candles. Oh, let's do that. I'm glad we found this room. Well, you know, it was a hard thing to find because everything was taken up. Jesus told us how to do it, though. Well, he, had, he always has a plan. He does. Did you, did you get somebody for the foot washing? Did, no, I thought it was your job. I, sure, it was yours. Well, blame me for everything. <laughs> Shall we tell them it's time to come in? May as well, because can't do much more here. Come on in. It's ready.
John's problem. I think it was Peter's. Ah, yeah, come on, man. What are we doing? Who's watching me what we're doing? What's going on? I don't know what we're doing. Who's going to wait on us? What's going on? You were the one that. What's Jesus doing? What's we're supposed doing? to be eating something tonight, so come on, guys. Somebody's got to wash her feet. What's the, what's the master doing? Why is what? What is Peter? What does he think he's doing? Did you get the servant? We're, I'm not going to act like a servant. Excuse no. me. You guys were supposed to set up the meal. That wasn't part of the deal. Everything. You're supposed to get everything ready. Oh, well, what's he doing? What's he doing? He's not going to do what he's doing. What is he doing? Where is he keeping doing that? That's a servant's job. He is. <laughs> Our master? What? Judas, come. This is wrong. It is. Sit. I know. Now I'm really embarrassed. It's my, my bad too, John. Peter, you're next. You're going to wash my feet? Peter, what I'm doing, I know you don't understand, but you will. No, no, Lord, you're never going to wash my feet. No. Peter, if I don't do this, you will have no part in me. Well, Master, if you're going to wash my feet, you better start with my feet. Do my hands and my head, too, because I am dirty. Peter. A man who's had a bath, he doesn't need another one. Just your feet, and you'll be clean. He usually does explain. Eventually. We'll see. He, he has surprised us before, hasn't he? No doubt.
I feel really bad, John, for accusing you of not getting a servant. You know? It was easier to accuse you, but it's thank you. We we messed up. Yeah, well, it's not the first time. No. Too true. Not just the two of you. <laughs> All of us. Yeah. yeah, one of us should be down there. Should have been one of us. We've all been quarreling. He felt one way or another. I wanted to be there at his right hand. By his throne, but I should have been there. It's a funny looking throne, isn't it? more important to be with him than right or left. Yeah. Amen. No, you don't understand what I've done for all of you. But this I have done to show you how things really are. That a, that a master and a servant, they're the same. That if you're going to be happy, you have to serve one another. You have to lift one another up. And you will continue to do this to be a servant, to be in my kingdom. For if you want to be great in God's kingdom, Learn to be a servant of all. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be a servant of all. 
Learn to be a servant of all. Learn to be a servant of all. If you want to be great in God's kingdom, learn to be a servant of all. The disciples are still contemplating this unbelievable event. Jesus, their Master and Lord, has washed their feet. They see themselves in an altogether different light. Their hearts are bound with love to each other. There is a whole different atmosphere in the upper room now, one of love and unity but it is about to change drastically. The twelve disciples are not prepared for the, what they are about to hear. Jesus' words fill them with dread and horror. Listen. Friends, I'm not referring to all of you. I, I know those who have, I have chosen. But this is to fulfill the scriptures. This must be done. But I'm telling you before it happens that you would know that I am. Tonight, one of you will betray me. What? 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 Did, what? what? Did, what? Did I hear right? Never. John, ask him who it is. Lord, who is it? My name is James. Since I am not John's brother, they call me Small James, or sometimes James the Less. I have been with Jesus ever since his baptism by John the Baptizer. I have stayed with him, prayed with him, doing my best to understand him and his father. I've been amazed by his words many times, but never more than now. 
He just said one of us will betray him. Certainly this is impossible. But I ask myself, is it I? Some call me Levi. Most call me Matthew. I was once a publican, a hated tax collector. The master called me one day. It was in the marketplace. And I was collecting taxes. And he says, follow me. And I got right up and I followed him as I have to this very day. I have studied the scriptures with great care and am convinced that Jesus fulfills those scriptures. Every prophecy about the Messiah, God's anointed. I have listened carefully to Jesus' sermons. It's a new gospel, truly good news for the whole world. But he has just spoken some news that's very bad, that someone will betray him. Who can it be? Will they suspect me because I was a tax collector? Do I suspect myself? Lord, is it I? His hands, carpenter's hands, rough and weathered like my own. His hands reached out and touched a leper, and he was healed. Reached out and touched Peter's mother-in-law, and he was made well. His hands have mended bones, and they opened eyes. His hands have shown mercy. All of us have received a blessing from his hands. All of us have watched his hands perform amazing miracles. Who could betray him into the hands of an enemy? Will I, Thaddeus, betray him? Is it I? I am Simon. When Jesus first called me to be his follower, I believed the solution to our national problem, the Roman occupation, was best resolved by terrorism and violence. That is why some still refer to me as Simon the Zealot. Since following the Master, I have come to realize the best conquest is the conquest of the heart. As a zealot, I have unconditionally surrendered my heart to Jesus. He is my Lord. Instead of being a defeated soldier, I have become a free man, free from fear, from hate, and from a deep burning anger. At this moment, my head is spinning. The master just said that one of us would betray him. The other disciples know that I was once devoted to intrigue and terrorism. Do they suspect me? Do I know my own heart? Lord, is it I? My brother, Andrew, and I were fishing on Galilee one night without catching a single fish. This man whom we now know as our master asked me to put down our nets again. Now he's a carpenter. He knows nothing about fishing. I'm a fisherman. We've been out all night. No fish. But because of who he is, I said, yes, Master, we'll put down our net one more time. And you know what happened? The net was so full of fish, we could not even pull it in. We had to call for help from some of our friends. After this, he asked us to follow him. And of course, he had to say something like he would make us fishers of men. But naturally, we followed him, and we have ever since. Once the master 
Ask me who I thought he was. I said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. He said, God has revealed this to you. Just a few minutes later, he told me he would suffer at the hands of sinful men in Jerusalem. I protested. He replied to me, get thee behind me, Satan. I guess I am a mixture of good and evil. Tonight, he told me I would deny him three times. Deny him. Now he says one of us will betray him. If I knew who that betrayer was, I would pierce him in the heart with a knife. Pierce him. Maybe I'd pierce my own. Lord, is it I? My name is Andrew. I've been known as Peter's little brother since the day I was born. I left my fishing business to follow that fiery preacher, John the Baptizer. And now, I follow him. I love bringing people to Jesus. I brought my brother Peter to Jesus. I found the lad with the loaves and fishes, and I brought him to Jesus. Just the other day in the temple outer court, I brought two Gentiles to meet him. I have been a friend and companion of the master. What greater gift could a fisherman have in his life? There are people who I know would love to see Jesus killed. But I can't imagine that any one of us would do it. I, I question, could it, could it be me? Could I betray my Lord? Jesus, is it I? After Jesus called Peter and Andrew to follow him, he came to our boat where we, my, my, my father Zebedee, my brother James, and I were mending nets. And he invited us to become his followers. Uh, we've been with him through so many things since then. I was thinking about it, and the, one of the greatest was that I, I earned a nickname, the Beloved, loved by Jesus, loved by the one who is greater than all of us. And I, I was there in the mountain when we saw him have his face transformed until it shone like the sun. He shared with me his late night conversation with Nicodemus. And of course, Peter and I just set this Passover supper up together. Even though we who are around this table are his closest friends and followers, I do not think that we understand the depth of his love for us. He would give his life for mine. How could I not do the same? Would my pride make me stumble? Will my pride make me stumble? Will I betray my Lord? Could I? Lord, is it I? My name is Thomas. Sometimes I'm called Didymus. In Hebrew and Aramaic, it means twin. When I first met Jesus, it was as if I were talking to my twin brother. He knew me so deeply, so intimately. I'd like to know the facts before I make a decision. I'm cautious. 
It's just that I like to see things clearly before I commit myself. I must admit, when I first met Jesus, it was difficult for me to accept that he had the power to do miraculous wonders. But I've seen him do wonders, and I've seen him change lives. I've been listening to Jesus speak around the table here. Words of, filled with confusion, talk of betrayal, talk of death. I won't have it. I will not lose the one who makes me feel well and knows me so deeply. Yet I wonder, is there something I have done that will lead, or will do for that matter, that will lead to this betrayal that he speaks of? Is it possible that he knows my life of faith? my hidden doubts, my fears. Lord, is it I? I am James, John's brother, a fisherman. We used to fish with Peter and Andrew. In fact, Jesus called us to follow him the same day he, he called Peter. Jesus calls us, John and I, the sons of thunder. <laughs> Actually, we're the sons of Zebedee. He's a rich and powerful man in the community. And, and being Zebedee's son, I thought that I would be assured of a place of power in the new kingdom. My mother even went so far as to ask if John and I could sit at Jesus' right hand when he claimed his throne. But Jesus replied, that it was not in his power to grant that request. The others were incredibly angry when they heard of that, which, understandably so. I didn't understand what he meant. But then Jesus talked to us about what the most honored would do in his kingdom. He said that the most honored would be servants and, and not masters. Even then, I didn't understand. Until just a moment ago, he washed our feet, our dirty feet. How could any one of us betray him? We, we who have seen him perform miracles, we have heard the voice of God say, this is my son. Just don't understand. Could could it possibly be my brother John? I, I I tremble when I ask myself. Maybe it's me. Master, is it I? I am Philip of Bethsaida in Galilee. I was listening to a preaching of John the Baptizer and along with some of the others. And I heard Jesus' invitation to follow him. Since that time, I have been with him. We have experienced so much with Jesus. Usually we are joyful in his presence. But tonight, there's something wrong. He seems so tired, so burdened. He who has given us hope seems to have lost all hope. Can any one of us be so blind? Could any one of us forget his power, his compassion? Could I forget? Master, is it I? I am Nathaniel, although sometimes I'm called Bartholomew. Like many of the others, I was a fisherman. John the baptizer was the one that introduced me to Jesus. And it was Philip who came to me and said, We have found him, whom Moses and the prophets wrote about, Jesus of Nazareth. Come and see. 
Then I met Jesus, and he knew me, and he knew my innermost thoughts. Since that time, I've been one of his disciples. Now we're eating the Passover meal together. And he says one of us will betray him? How can that be? Could a traitor be numbered among his closest friends? What can make me betray my closest friend? Lord, is it I? Is it I? My name is Judas Iscariot, the treasurer of this group. I have faithfully followed Jesus, but I am growing tired of his reluctance to take a stand against our oppressors. I believe he is who he says he is, but why would God send a Messiah for this? To wash feet and serve bread? A spiritual king? No. What we need is a political king. Someone to rise up and overthrow these Roman tyrants. A betrayer among us indeed. Someone must do something. I have. Tonight the elders and chief priests will help me. Help him usher in the political kingdom. History will thank me for this. Oh yes, someone has betrayed him. Perhaps all of us will before the night is over. Master, is it I? What you must do, do quickly. Where's he going? Where's Judas going? Why is he leaving? Jesus seemed to Long I have desired to eat this Passover with you. Take and eat this bread, for it is my body, broken for you. This wine. This wine is my blood, spilled for you. Spilled for you for a new covenant. Drink of it.
together on our knees. Take, eat. This is my body broken for you. Take, drink, for this is my blood spilled for you. Let us drink, wine together on our knees. When I fall on my knees. With my face to the rising sun, O Lord, have mercy on me.
my friends, my children. I will only be with you a little longer. You will look for me, but you, you won't find me. And where I'm going, you cannot come. Why? Why not? Yes, I am leaving you. But I am leaving you with a new covenant, a new commandment. Love one another. For by this they will know that you are my disciples if you show love one to another. But Lord, where are you going? Where I'm going, Peter, you cannot follow me. But you will. You will follow later. And don't let your hearts be troubled. For where I'm going, I'm going to build a mansion for each one of you. And you will come and you will be with me forever. But for now, you must stay. So love one another. Let us sing. Praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise Him. All ye people, praise the Lord, all ye nations, praise Him. All ye people, for His merciful kindness is great toward us. For the truth of the Lord endureth forever. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord be gracious to you and keep you both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Come. It is time. Let us go. I am the vine. You are the branches. Abide in me. Abide in me. And so Jesus made his way from the upper room to an appointment with destiny, a garden of prayer, a betrayal, an arrest, a cross, and a grave. But it doesn't end there. His steps led him on the resurrection on Sunday. Not only has our Passover lamb died for us, he now ministers in heaven for us. Just as Jesus loved his disciples then, he loves his disciples now. He loves you. You are his precious and honored child. We have a job to do. We are modern day disciples of Jesus. And the last words that he spoke to his disciples, he speaks to us this morning. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go. Not stay in here cozy and comfortable. Therefore, go making disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Please stand with me for prayer. Jesus, you have commissioned us, your modern-day disciples, this morning to go 
to go back to our homes and to our workplaces and our neighborhoods and tell people the good news that we know. There's a risen Savior. There's a Savior who died that no matter what the sin, it can be forgiven. There's a Savior who will wash us whiter than snow, no matter how dirty we are on the inside. There is a Savior who conquered death so that when loved ones die or someday if we find ourselves dying, we will have the assurance that we will live again because you are the resurrection and you are the life. No one else can claim that but you. And for that, we praise you and we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen.